بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's an honor to be amongst you and amongst the teachings of Quran and Ahl Bayt alayhum as-salam Insha'Allah together we can take as much as possible and as we can asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to widen our perspective and to widen our hearts and open our hearts to the knowledge of Quran and Ahl Bayt alayhum as-salam In the previous episode we reached to the point of when was the Holy Quran compiled based on the names of the Surah Al-Hamd, which one was Fatiha Al-Kitab. As we discussed, despite uh, what is well known, and it's a rumor that has been passed around, that Quran was compiled during the time of uh, Uthman, and he was the one who compiled the Holy Quran. It's not true. According to the teachings of Ahl Bayt that has reached us again, it was during the time of the Holy Prophet when Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi taught and told Amir al-Mu'minin, the commander of the faithful, where should each chapter be? Where should each verse be? And it was as a book, during, it came as a book during the time of Rasulullah, where we see when Eid uh, Eid event of Ghadir happened, Rasulullah states, إِنِّي تَارَكُنْ فِيكُمْ مُثَّقَلَيْنِ or ثَقْلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَعِتْرَةِ أَهْلَ بَيْتِ If it wasn't a book, Rasulullah won't say, a, won't say kitab. Kitab, as we mentioned within the previous episode, kitab means something that has two cover and has pages in the middle. This is called kitab. If it was a leaflet, if it was skins written and <coughs> pages here and there, it wouldn't be called kitab. And this chapter wouldn't be called by Ahl al-Bayt by Rasulullah as Fatihatul Kitab or Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, or the one Fatihatul Kitab that it is the beginning of the book. Also, how can it be that Rasulullah, Ashraful Makhluqat, the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he thought and he thought and paid attention to every small little detail every small little detail that his within the within his lifespan he mentioned and he discussed it will he leave this important task the task of bringing the quran together of course not this is part of our belief as the shia of ahl al-bayt that the book was compiled during the time of the prophet because all wise and through a, a couple of ahadith where Rasulullah said, I want to make sure this book comes together as one book, these pages of Quran. And he ordered Amir Mu'mineen to put it together. And he was on top of Amir Mu'mineen, uh, teaching him where to put the verses of Quran and the chapters. Chapters. He said, because I don't want for the Quran happens what happened to the Torah and Injil, to other books. I don't want people to be misguided to say, oh, this was part of the Qur'an or this was not part of the Qur'an. We believe that the Qur'an that we have amongst us, us as a Twelvers, according to the narratives of Ahl Bayt, this Qur'an is the same Qur'an and the same sequence and order that was uh, put together at the time of the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. So one might ask then why the rumor is so out that it was compiled during the time of Uthman or Muawiyah and so on and so forth because they tried to bring virtues and fadila for those people. Not having any virtues themselves, they tried to bring them as a virtue that, okay, he was the one who put the Quran together. This is a very high virtue. So we summarize it and there's a discussion, a lot of discussion that can be uh, get into uh, about the timing and what happened and so on and so forth. But I'm giving you, based on our time, the general uh, ideas to hand. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We start after the previous episode. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim to be the first, the first verse of the Holy Quran, and it is part of the surah, but it is separate verse. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين seven verses seven verses if you remember we read ولقد آتيناك سبعا من المثاني seven verses so for بسم الله to be the first verse of the Holy Quran and every chapter except Surah Al-Bara'a uh, begins with the first verse to be Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So that becomes to 113 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced that Bismillah which is not at the beginning of Surah Al-Bara'a uh, in the other verse where the letter that Prophet Sulaiman wrote for the Queen of Saba he wrote in it, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So that's another verse within the Holy Quran. To make it 114 times, this verse has been repeated within the Holy Quran. Very important. Let's get, let us get a little bit more practical. Every nation would start their endeavor, their most important task, by the name of someone, by the name of something. And they dedicate that most important task or affair or endeavor to someone. During the time of Jahiliya, for example, they would dedicate and they would remember and they would bring the names of Lat and Hubal, uh, Uzzad, two, two, three different most important idols that existed uh, in Kaaba. Within the religion of Islam, we have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That Ahl Bayt have emphasized so much and there are numerous narrations where they said, Everything that you want to start, make sure you start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why? You know, living in the West, these examples are very uh, obvious to you. Every company has a slogan. Every company has a branding logo and has a theme. It has this theme and logo and branding. Everything comes under this logo, under this theme, under this motto, under this slogan, everything comes under this. By bringing Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim to our lives, we are making everything that we do to have the color, to have the brand, to have the title and the slogan of divine name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beneficent, the merciful, I start every task. Every task. That brings us to an action plan. Everything that we do, everything, I mean everything, the action plan will be for us to start slowly, slowly, get to use, get the habit of saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and start it. What is the benefit? What is the benefit if we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Man qara'a, qala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi. Man qara'a Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, kataballahu lahu bi kulla harfin arba'ata alaf hasana. When we read Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, for every word, every alphabet, which is 19 alphabet, which is in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah will write us 4,000 hasana. وَمَحَا عَنْهُ أَرْبَعَةُ آلَافِ سَيِّئَةِ And he will remove and delete 4,000 sins with every word within Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَرَفَعَ لَهُ أَرْبَعَةُ آلَافِ دَرَجَةِ And Allah will elevate us 4,000 levels for every word within Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What other blessings do we need? قال إن العب أنذر حديث that hadith was in uh, Tafsir al-Burhan. Another hadith, and also in Tafsir al-Burhan, where the Imam says, إن العبد إذا أراد أن يقرأ أو يعمل عملا, a servant of Allah, when he wants to read something or do something, فيقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أي بهذا الاسم أعمل هذا العمل. I start this work, I start this recitation, I start this reading, uh, with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, 
فكل عمل يعمله يبدأ فيه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فإنه مبارك له فيه If we start everything that we do, every task that we undertake, every action, everything that we do, we start by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be blessed. This act will be a blessed. This task will be blessed. This reading will be blessed. We wake up in the morning. As soon as we wake up, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I want to go to the bathroom. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Take a shower. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sit for breakfast. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everywhere, sit in the car. Leave the house. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sit in the car. Turning the car. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Getting to work. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Getting to school. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Leaving work. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Eating lunch. Eating dinner. Everything. We mean everything that we, we do. If we want the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in this action, we should start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sa'altu ar-Ridha. Narration says, سألت الرضا عن بسم الله قال قال معنى قول القائل بسم الله أي أسمي نفسي بسمة من سمات الله عز وجل. When I say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم, I I I'm giving a characteristic or an attribute of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وهو العبودية من سمات الله. I am worshiping, I am becoming good servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فقال فقلت له ما السمة قال العلامة. My branding is becoming divine. I am doing everything based on the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah, Ahl Bayt alayhum wa salam. Respect, respectfully. Everything that I do. I start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everything that I do. It will be Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is very, very, very important action plan that we have to keep in mind. Very important. Why? So what is the benefit? Again, as if you remember, if we discussed about A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, not only saying it verbally, no, believing that we need to seek protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should feel the danger of Shaitan, that he's trying to deviate us uh, any way possible. Saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Number one, we're bringing the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our task. Removing shaitan from this task. We bring the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no more space for shaitan when we mention the name of Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in everything that we do. So when Allah is there, I need to think of it. I brought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into my task by mentioning his name. Again, not that Allah is not there. If I mention it, I don't mean it. When Allah is not there, when I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah comes to my task. No, I'm blessing my task by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thinking that Allah, this task that I'm doing, inshallah, getting, it's, it's getting me closer to you. So when I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I have to make sure the task and the job that I'm taking, I won't, I won't take it... Uh, silly. I won't pay attention to it. I will just do some sloppy job and I just try to finish it. I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'll give you an example. Anything that we do, we must do our best in it. We must perfect whatever we do. I'll give you inshallah a uh, story and I will conclude. One day, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi he, uh, he was burying someone within the grave. He himself went to the grave and he buried a believer. And then they gave him these stones, one after one after one. They were like square, a rectangle, uh, piece of blocks. They give and they put it on top of the grave and then they cover it with the soil and the dirt. Rasulullah placed all these blocks and after these blocks comes the dirt. Rasulullah was, you know, when you put the blocks, the blocks don't come exactly next to one another, edge to edge. There were places that were empty and there were holes. Rasulullah with his own index finger, he was completely going around the corner and make sure all the holes and all the missing edges are filled with the rest, with the dust and uh, clay, so it's make sure it's completely covered. 
An individual told Rasulullah, Rasulullah, you're putting these blocks, you're paying attention to this job, and you're doing a very perfect job. Don't worry about it. We're going to put dirt on it, and it's going to be covered with dirt. Nobody, be able, nobody will see it. Rasulullah says, may Allah's mercy be upon the person who does the job, who does the job, and who does his best in it. And he perfects this job. Rahimullah, Imra'an amala amalan fa'atqanah. May Allah bless the one who does something and he perfects that task that has been given. So much importance into this statement. Us as a Muslim, everything that we do, as a believer of Rasulullah, Quran, Ahlul Bayt, we will say, inshallah, as our action plan, everything we do, we say, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So we get into habit of saying, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, before every task. And then we will keep in mind while we are throughout, while we are through the process of this task, this job, this endeavor, we make sure to do our best if we want rewards from it. Even physical reward, even, even materialistic reward. If we do good in it and we have brought Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, both will give hand in hand together, blessing and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we doing our best in it, these two will give hand in hand together. And inshallah, we will get the benefit and the reward from this task that I'm putting. But if I say, okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and I won't do my best at the job. Of course, it's not going to work. We need dua. We need Allah in our daily lives by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and we should do our share. Both of this together, we can see how much we start when we start a business, when we go to school, when we are cooking at a house, when we are cleaning, we see blessings. We see something different because we started everything with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, we will conclude this episode by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most important dua and that will be to hasten the appearance of our beloved man, Imam Mahdi Ajalallah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih Fi hadhi al-sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'a Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a Wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahameen